If your car is experiencing computer problems or you suspect that the ECU is on its way out, you may be wondering is there a way to test the car's computer? And the answer is yes, and the Godiak GT100 Plus is a tool that can allow us to do a lot of that troubleshooting. And what's really interesting about this tool is that it's actually a multifunctional tool. So we can use this tool to power the car's computer completely outside of the vehicle, not only for diagnostic and testing, but also for programming. We can also use this tool in between the car and our scan tool which can be very expensive to protect it from the car's electrical system which may have an issue and can potentially damage this tool and you may have also heard of people using a paper clip in their obd2 connector to activate the immobilizer function on some vehicles to be able to access the programming key functionality well with this tool we don't have to use a paper clip anymore this allows us to trigger that functionality from the tool itself Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Alex the Car Guy, and if you're new here, I review cool car gadgets and other accessories that I find for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of videos you like, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. And as always, before I get started, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below to this tool if you want to look at this further or acquire one for yourself. And here's the Godiak GT100 Plus OBD2 Breakout Box. Now don't let all of this intimidate you, the tool is actually quite simple. If we are testing the car's computer and it is still mounted on the vehicle, we're gonna connect with the left hand side of the tool. If the car's computer has been disconnected and removed from the vehicle, we're gonna connect to it using the right hand side of the tool. Now in the bottom we have three switches. This is just a simple power on power off switch for the actual tool itself. And then we have this green switch right here. This is gonna simulate the car battery being connected to the ACU or car's computer. The next button right here is gonna simulate turning the ignition key and letting the computer know that the car is being started. And if I turn this off, it's like turning off the ignition switch. And on the top of the tool, we have 16 connectors and each one represents one of the 16 pins in an OBD2 connector. Now this is gonna be useful if we decide to probe the connector directly by inserting a probe, a voltmeter or a scope into them. And we have a voltage display to confirm that the EC is receiving the correct amount of volts and we also have an amperage display. Knowing how many amps a computer is pulling is helpful to understand if the computer is pulling more power than it should. But you also may be wondering if this tool is only for advanced technicians. And in my opinion the answer is no. I think this is a tool that can grow with you as a car technician. In the beginning we can use it for its very basic functions before learning more of its advanced capabilities and to help us to get familiar on how to use this tool and all of these features they have included this very nice detailed instruction manual that breaks down the tool how it corresponds to the OBD connector the different ways that this tool can be connected to a car's computer or to a diagnostics tool and how to connect this to be able to power a computer in case we want to do programming to it or in case we're trying to access the immobilizer module to be able to create or add or program any new keys with our professional scan tool. So this is really neat that they provided a very simple tutorial that we can follow here to get us started, but also to really learn how to use this tool to its full potential. You may be wondering, how do we connect this to our car? And as you can see, they have included a cable that can get plugged in on the left-hand side of the tool, and it has two OBD connectors. One of the OBD connectors is gonna connect to our vehicle, and once it's connected, the tool is gonna fire up and turn on, and we're gonna have indicators. As you can see, each one of these is an LED light. And remember, this represents the OBD2 interface. So those LED indicators will tell us if the OBD2 connector on our vehicle is functioning correctly and if we are communicating with the ECU, which is the very first step to do when we're trying to troubleshoot a computer. Is the e computer able to communicate? Once we know it is able to communicate, we can use the secondary OBD2 port to connect our scan tool and begin to diagnose the car. But what if I remove the computer from the vehicle and I have the computer sitting on my bench? How do we power that computer up? 
Well, they have included this AC adapter, which gets plugged in onto the left hand side of the tool. And this adapter provides 12 volts, not only to this box, but it's going to provide those 12 volts to the car's computer. Now to connect to the computer, they have included this cable, which gets plugged in into the right hand side of the tool. And if we look at the car's service manual, it's going to tell us on the computer what pins do what function and we have these contacts and each contact has been labeled with those functions so from here it's just a matter of matching the contact to the corresponding pins on the computer and here's what the Godiak GT100 plus will look like if you are using it to test a computer outside of the vehicle or to program the computer outside of the vehicle now let me walk you through this setup as you can see we have power here from the adapter that they include and that powers the GT Godiak 100 plus box and that is also going to power the ECU. Now how does this connect to the computer? Well using the connector I showed you early with the individual pinouts that connect directly to the pins in there. Now you have to know how to read car diagrams to be able to make those connections but if you understand how to read car schematics then making those connections doesn't take very long. And what I like about the wire breakout box right here is that they have made it very easy for us to know where to connect them to because all of them have been labeled as I showed you earlier but they're also color coded. So all the red ones, for example, are going to have positive power. The brown ones are going to be grounds. And then the yellow ones are OBD positions, but they are positions that are left for the factory to be able to decide what to do with those. If they wanted to use them good, if they don't use them, they don't use them. Now this ones right here are the rest of the OBD positions. And these are the commonly used ones, which is the can low, can high, the K line, the L line. So as you can see, it doesn't take that many connections to be able to interact to our computer. Now coming over to this side, I have an output that comes out, out of the GT100 box. And as you can see, that cable is going to my diagnostics tool. Now this diagnostics tool could be a tool like this or could be a programmer if I was trying to do something very advanced with this system. And this happens to be a Dodge Neon S34 computer that I connected. If you're curious on learning how I made each of those individual connections and how I read the schematic diagram for it, stay tuned as I have a more detailed video upcoming on individually making those connections. So as you can see, we have all three switches being on, which is the equivalent of the car being on the on position and the computer is also running. We have 12.2 volts and we are pulling 0.17 amps. We also have a really good indicator already and that is this blinking light. This means that there is a communication. There's a protocol that is communicating right now. So that tells us that this is alive. But now let's try to connect to this computer. Now this is going to attempt to read the computer and there's probably going to be quite a bit of codes in here because all the connections going to sensors and going to the all the normal things on a vehicle are disconnected <laughs> and sure enough the check engine and slide is on and there is 16 individual codes that have been set and makes sense again because all the sensors are disconnected so the computer right now is saying hey a bunch of things are going wrong let's read the codes okay store codes a total of 16 codes so we are actually pulling the codes from here now some of these codes are specific to the sensor being disconnected some of them could also potentially be a failure internally inside of this computer now i know this computer is 100 percent in working condition so all these codes are related to the sensors being disconnected but in addition to pulling the DTCs we can also pull the information of the vehicle or in this case the information of the actual computer now this is very helpful if you're trying to identify for example what VIN number this particular computer was programmed to and I'm going to show you some of these things just so you can see how they can pull the number here we are pulling the VIN number <laughs> and if I'll go back calibration ID is telling us what that number is. Again, this is very helpful if you're trying to identify if this computer is the correct programming for the given year and if it's the original programming for that particular computer. And while it's a great party trick to be able to pull codes from a computer that is not in a vehicle, how else can this help us? Well, some advanced mechanics will actually test the computer outside of the vehicle by individually probing some of those connections or by pro connecting a simulation of a sensor. So we can potentially test and recreate a sensor functionality and we can read on here the live data and confirm is the problem with the computer or is the problem with the sensor. 
Now, most of the time, I'm not gonna pull a computer to get to that level of testing, but if you are in the business of repairing computers or you exhausted all resources on the vehicle, sometimes it is helpful to use the computer by itself to test the individual circuits to know if they are functioning correctly. But I also mentioned that this tool can be used to activate the car's instrument cluster or the immobilizer module in case we need to access that to create a new key in case we lost all the keys. And they have included resistors and these little banana plugs that can be inserted into one of these locations and this is going to vary from car to car and they have included jumper wires so we can select the right jumper based on the car that we're troubleshooting and activate either the instrument cluster or the immobilizer unit and then connect our standard tool to program or add a new key. And that was the Godiak GT100 Plus Breakout Box. As you saw, this box can be very powerful and is really only limited by the technician that is using it to test a computer. Literally, the possibilities with this thing in terms of what it can do are endless. The more I learn about how to test computers, the more I can think of ideas to use this. So as always, I've placed a link in the description down below to this unit if you wanna look at this further or acquire one for yourself. And if you're primarily interested on the immobilizer activation function of this unit, you may also wanna take a look at the Godiak GT105. Now this little guy is a small version of the GT100 Plus that primarily focuses on the immobilizer functionality of it. And I have a full review video called me know for it so stay tuned for that but i'll link it in the description down below if you want to compare that one and if you guys have any other questions that were regarding the gt100 plus box also put that in the comments down below if you found any part of this video helpful hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as i have a lot more cool videos for car gadgets coming up thank you guys for watching and as always i'll see you on the next one